The United States Coast Guard, born in 1790 as a revenue marine with a fleet of 10 small cutters to assist in collection of taxes for the new republic. As the nation grew, the service took on its humanitarian duties. Later, its ships carried the flag into the new frontier called Alaska. And in every major war, they've served gallantly alongside the Navy. Today, it is a worldwide organization of men, ships, planes, and stations, dedicated to maritime safety and the defense of our country. Truly, the service that serves mankind. Mission one, search and rescue. The saving of lives and property at sea is probably the best known of all Coast Guard efforts. Unfortunate freighters and tankers fall prey to mechanical difficulty or the fury of the sea. Ill-fated passenger liners are lost to fire, the most feared of all shipboard disasters. Watch standers at Coast Guard radio stations mount a constant vigil for their crackling SOS, the international signal that means a ship is in trouble. Almost before the last word is completed, the distress message is removed from the typewriter and fed into the teletype system. In a matter of seconds, it has snapped the crew of a Coast Guard Rescue Coordination Center into action. While the reported position of the SOS is being plotted, the controller calls the Amber Center for a list of merchant vessels nearest the distress case. His request is typed into the automatic data processing system. And a darting electronic probe selects a half a dozen ships out of the thousand or so being tracked by Amber, the automated merchant vessel report system. Within minutes, the controller has a list of the merchant ships near enough to be of assistance. Even before this information is received, he has set other Coast Guard rescue forces in motion. Since the distress ship is in offshore waters, long-range patrol planes are manned and launched from several Coast Guard air stations. Amphibious HU-16 that can land at sea and pick up survivors. Twin-engine HC-123s that can locate distressed vessels and drop emergency equipment. Huge HC-130s that fly high and fast on four engines to the reported positions and then drop down for low-level operation, using only two engines to conserve fuel and increase search time. They carry powerful communications equipment to coordinate search efforts of other aircraft and ships. The commanding officer of an ocean station vessel is also alerted to the distress case. A spin of the helmsman wheel and the high endurance cutter, a veteran of 30 years service, speeds toward the stricken ship. A 210-foot medium endurance class cutter is also ordered to proceed and assist. In less than an hour's time, merchant vessels, Coast Guard planes, and cutters are well on their way to save the lives of the crewmen aboard the stricken ship, and the ship itself, if possible. These rescue forces answer hundreds of distress calls from transoceanic ships and planes and save millions of dollars worth of property each year. Most important of all, they save several hundred lives. Mid-ocean rescues are perhaps the most dramatic, but coastal search and rescue services are in far greater demand as several million boatmen crowd the inland and coastal water areas of the nation. A telephone or voice radio call directly to a Coast Guard station sends crewmen to their boats on the run. Trained hands bring powerful engines to life. They throw off lines. 
ease away from docks and head for the boat in trouble. Rugged 44-foot motor lifeboats. 30 and 40-foot utility boats. Their crews, with but one thing in mind, get help to the stricken boatmen as quickly as possible. The duty officer at a Coast Guard air station has the same idea. A jet turbine engine winds life into rotors, and a flying lifeboat is on its way. Flying at almost 100 miles an hour, the chopper will probably reach the distress case first, but the rescue boats will not be far behind. Within minutes, helicopter crewmen spot the bright orange smoke of a distress signal, and one of the boatmen signaling for pickup of an injured man. Helicopter, pilot, and crew act as one during the approach, lowering and hoisting of the basket. Coastal search and rescue forces answer almost 40,000 distress calls each year. Hardy and skillful Coast Guardsmen battle roaring surf. Rescue victims of raging floods. And pierce dark of night to aid hapless boatmen in their time of need. Mission 2, Merchant Marine Safety. The Coast Guard's concern for lives and property at sea is the driving force in its merchant marine safety program. Coast Guard representatives join foreign interest in accelerated efforts to make the ocean safer for commerce and more carefree for international travelers. To these joint efforts, American delegates bring the expertise which has made the American merchant marine the safest in the world. Safety in an American-built vessel starts at the design stage. Experienced Coast Guard officers and technicians check every detail of plans and drawings. During construction, they continue to keep a close watch not only on workmanship, but on materials, equipment, and safety devices as well. A certificate of inspection is awarded only when the completed ship meets all safety standards. Licenses posted nearby certify that her officers have also met Coast Guard requirements. Throughout the life of the vessel, the Coast Guard makes periodic inspections of both men and ship. Emergency drills are held under the watchful eyes of ship's officers and Coast Guard inspectors. Are the lifeboats really sound? Does each one have the required emergency equipment and rations on board? Is the ship's fire detection system operating properly? Will the ship's engines and their safety devices pass inspection? When something does go wrong, Coast Guard investigators probe deep to find out how and why it happened. So from the drawing board to the scrapyard, the Coast Guard helps keep American merchant ships the safest in the world. Mission 3, Aids to Navigation. With a bell to sound the warning and a light to show the way, mariners traverse our waterways with safety and confidence. Over 43,000 aids to navigation mark channels of safe passage in harbors, rivers, lakes, and coastal waters. The best that modern technology has to offer is put to use in the design, construction, 
and operation of these aids. New synthetic paints that will resist barnacles, wind and tide for years before they need repainting. New highly reflected materials applied to markers and buoys to be readily picked up by the mariner's searchlight. New single pile concrete structures are the latest thing in aids to navigation markers, the seafarer's signposts. These signposts take many forms and guide many kinds of traffic. Everything from ocean going ships entering and leaving harbors to pleasure boatmen in remote inland waterways. Coast Guard ingenuity has also created offshore light structures, a kind of lighthouse on stilts. Provided with all the comforts of home and the best in equipment, their crews have taken up the vigil of some of the oldest and best known lightships along the Atlantic coast. The flashes of their multi-million candle power lights can be seen for 20 miles or more. The very latest in aids to navigation hardware is the Super Sea Buoy. Its 50 ton body houses a butane fuel generator, radio controlled fog signal, radio beacon, and a flashing light, a tireless, efficient robot that replaces a light ship and its entire crew. Man is still the guiding force in the Coast Guard's almost worldwide Loran chain. This long-range aid to navigation system has Coast Guardsmen manning some 60 stations in over 20 different countries. Their sky-high antenna towers, radiating signals over thousands of miles of trackless ocean to assist navigators of transoceanic ships and aircraft. In another aid to navigation operation, Coast Guardsmen combat one of man's oldest foes, ice. Blunt-nosed river tenders fitted with sharp icebreaker bows, free huge barge toes from winter's icy grip. The Coast Guard Cutter Mackinac, a 10,000 horsepower ice pick, leads ore ships through Great Lakes ice. Huge nomadic icebergs, beautiful but deadly, try the mettle of Coast Guardsmen on the International Ice Patrol. A child of tragedy, the patrol came into existence as a result of the sinking of the liner Titanic in 1913. Coast Guard planes search thousands of square miles of ocean in a day and not only report bergs that wander into North Atlantic shipping lanes, but also bomb them with colored dye to keep track of their movements. Since the patrol started, not a single ship has been lost to the deadly bergs. Mission four, Marine Law Enforcement. Law enforcement duties also take Coast Guard ships and crews into frigid waters to enforce international treaties on the high seas. As the hungry world turns more and more to the sea as a source of food, foreign fishing fleets, particularly Russian and Japanese, work closer and closer to United States coastal waters. Coast Guard ships and planes, many carrying U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service inspectors, patrol treaty areas and observe operations for possible treaty or territorial violations. Under such surveillance, the Alaskan fur-bearing seal herd has increased from 200,000 in 1911 to a million and a half at present. Just as fishing fleet operations are on the increase, so is maritime commerce as more and more ships pass in and out of our ports. Coast Guard port security officers work closely with local government and civilian organizations to keep ports and harbors safe. Inspectors move through docks and warehouses checking the storage and handling of dangerous cargo. And inspecting required safety equipment In isolated loading areas, Coast Guard details supervise the loading and unloading of commercial and military explosives.
Other Coast Guardsmen make day and night harbor patrols, keeping a sharp eye out for possible danger to port facilities and ships. They also investigate oil pollution, an ever-growing hazard to health and safety in coastal and port areas. The handling and water transport of chemical cargoes present another challenge to port safety forces. Much of this material is highly toxic, corrosive, or flammable. Besides creating handling and movement problems, it's another source of pollution, especially in plant areas where it must be transferred to or from its waterborne carriers. An unprecedented demand for marine law enforcement has been created as over four million pleasure boats jam inland in coastal waterways. Coast Guardsmen enforce federal boating laws in all navigable waters in an effort to prevent boating accidents. Accidents that take almost 1,500 lives and damage over $5 million worth of property annually. Boating safety teams board and inspect about 70,000 motorboats each year to see that they're properly registered and have the required equipment on board. The Coast Guard Auxiliary, a volunteer organization, assists the regular service in boating safety operations. Auxiliarists make more than 150,000 courtesy examinations of pleasure boats and teach basic rules of safe boating to over 200,000 boatmen each year. They also make over 4,000 regatta patrols and carry out almost 7,000 assistance missions annually. Thus, Coast Guard Marine Law Enforcement runs the gamut from safety of seals in Alaska to auxiliary seals of safety in Biscayne Bay. Mission 5, Oceanography, Meteorology, Polar Operations. Duties that take Coast Guard ships and men into the major ocean areas of the world. Of these three, oceanography is the oldest, dating back to 1867 with the Bering Sea Patrol in Alaskan waters. Today, Coast Guardsmen probe vast undersea areas in support of worldwide exploration of the inner space. From the decks of polar icebreakers, they plumb the depth of frigid, often ice-locked waters of the Arctic and Antarctic. Under constant surveillance of Russian military aircraft and men of war, they've recorded data in the Barents and Kara Seas. They gather sea life samples in round-the-clock observations aboard a converted World War II Navy seaplane tender now serving as a Coast Guard oceanographic ship. Oceanographic buoys are set intended by Coast Guard buoy tenders in the North Atlantic and in the Caribbean. Coast Guard forces also probe outer space to collect meteorological information. Ocean station vessels carry weather observation equipment and weather bureau personnel as they patrol four stations in the North Atlantic Ocean and two in the Northern Pacific. Weather balloons carrying radio sounds are launched from their rolling decks. They send back humidity, temperature, and pressure readings from the upper air spaces where much of our day-to-day -day weather is born. Radar follows their flight to reveal wind speed and direction at various altitudes. Combined with frequent surface observations, this information is transmitted to the U.S. Weather Bureau at regular intervals.
In the ice-breaking business since the 1860s, the Coast Guard now operates all polar icebreakers, having taken over the Navy breakers in 1966 and 1967. Operating in support of scientific and national defense efforts, these ships lead cargo vessels deep into the Arctic and Antarctic to establish new or rebuild old stations. They team up with helicopters to resupply isolated polar outposts during the short summer season as man finds it necessary to penetrate deeper and stay longer in the ice areas of the world. Mission 6, Military Preparedness and Operations. Just as Coast Guardsmen battle the seas and the elements, they also have fought our enemies in every war since 1790. For in time of war, or when so ordered by the President, the Coast Guard becomes part of the Navy. So as they carry out their many peacetime duties, they must also maintain a high state of military preparedness. This readiness starts at the receiving and training centers where young bodies and young minds are prepared for the physical and mental rigors of Coast Guard duty. At service schools, technical skills are learned. Electronics, communications, navigation and seamanship. A board cutter is designed and equipped for both humanitarian and combat operations. Men and equipment are exercised and put to the test over and over again in the name of military preparedness. That such preparedness pays dividends is a matter of yesterday's history and today's headlines. As Coast Guard high endurance cutters patrol the sea approaches to South Vietnam, carrying the fight to the enemy and providing vital fuel, food and water to small Navy and Coast Guard vessels on coastal surveillance patrol. Eighty-two foot cutters of Coast Guard Squadron One cruise over a million miles a year intercepting and searching thousands of junks to prevent infiltration of enemy men and supplies into South Vietnam. machine gun fire into designated target areas as they support friendly forces ashore. And in running fights, they destroy or capture enemy vessels. At the same time, they continue their tradition of humanitarian service by giving medical aid, school supplies, and other necessities of life to grateful South Vietnamese villagers. Then, back to the war, just as Coast Guardsmen have done for over 177 years. Mission 7. Reserve training. The greatest demonstration of Coast Guard response to the call of wartime duty came when World War II strength reached over 170,000 men and women. Of these, more than 150,000 were reservists. Organized in 1941, these citizen sailors manned the ships, planes, and stations at home and on every front of the war. Today, reservists train and drill to develop and maintain skills necessary to meet mobilization requirements. Port security forces inspect and patrol waterfront areas. And learn to fight raging fires. Vessel augmentation units stand watches and hold underway drills aboard reserve training vessels and operational cutters. Reserve aviation units train to support air stations to take over duties of aircraft maintenance.
crash crews and control tower operations. All in all, over 26,000 men and women of the Coast Guard Reserve stand ready to answer the call to duty should the day ever come. Mission 8, Semper Paratus. Always ready, not just a motto, but a way of life for the men and women who wear the Coast Guard shield. Never in over 177 years has this service been more ready to serve. In today's Coast Guard, the watchword is new. New equipment and new ways of doing the job better. A new identification insignia. And serving under a new agency, the Department of Transportation. New offshore light structures replace legendary light ships. New high endurance cutters, sleek 378 footers, carrying everything from helicopters to closed circuit television. Trim 210 foot cutters, newest of the medium endurance class. New types of smaller vessels, 82 footers for coastal law enforcement, search and rescue and combat duty in Vietnam. Versatile, almost indestructible 44 foot motor lifeboats Pound for pound, the most rugged boat ever built. New types of aircraft, proven specially equipped C-130s. Gas turbine amphibious helicopters, flying lifeboats. Perhaps the most versatile life-saving craft ever developed. New bases for more economical and efficient operation. To operate and maintain the new ships, planes, and other equipment comes a new concept in manpower. Officers and men conditioned physically and trained in complex skills. Divers to probe the tropical or polar undersea. Computer operations. And the fundamentals of nuclear energy. For these men must provide the skill the knowledge and dedication to duty to carry out the missions of the Coast Guard and meet the ever-growing challenge to keep the service always ready.